what's up everybody Zach here today with review Empire celebrating the 4th of July weekend with a delicious rack of baby bags and if you're not familiar with uh, cooking baby bags we'll show you how to do that today get it done right on that pit boss so first things first you've got a nice slab of baby back ribs baby back ribs are shorter and they are a little more meaty proportionally as opposed to spare ribs and a lot of times people prefer these over spare ribs some people prefer spare ribs over baby backs me put it on my plate and i'll eat it you know what i'm saying you probably just like me if you haven't already hit that like button for me consider becoming a subscriber to my channel I'm just home today, me and my two baby girls, they're in there watching TV. They're probably going to chime in here in a little while, so don't be too surprised by that if you hear them hollering, what you doing, dada, or something like that. So for starters, you want to have your ribs bone side up, and what we're going to do is we're going to take a trusty old paper towel, just like spare ribs, these baby backs have got a membrane that coats the back side of these ribs, which is going to act as a barrier to smoke. A barrier to your seasoning and they're gonna make for a tough bite if you do not remove it it's not a big deal to remove it so we're gonna go ahead and do that right now all you do is you just sort of peel that back get that membrane caught up underneath your paper towel and if you have been good and the 4th of July gods decide to shine on you like what's happening right now Oh my gosh, it's the best feeling in the world. Best feeling in the world. Top 20 for sure. Uh, when this membrane comes off, just like it's doing right now. All in nice, one big piece. You don't have to sit there and work to get all the little individual pieces off. But do, do your best to get as much of it off as possible because every rib counts, every rib it's covered in it and every rib needs full seasoning. What I did to prepare these before I put them on the chopping board here was I took them out of my packaging and I rinsed them with cold water. Maybe that doesn't make a big difference. I'm not sure. But what I, I feel like I've noticed that there's a cleaner taste uh, to the meat washing all that blood off the outside because there's not a lot of blood in the meat. It's more stuff that bleeds out over time and then just sticks to the outside. So I try to get that off of there. You can you know do what you want to do i just uh wash it with cold water and then i pat it dry with a paper towel so we've got our membrane off and looking good next phase in my seasoning process and you'll develop your own you know as long as you've got a decent rub and some salt pepper they're gonna be good if you cook them right if the texture is there it's hard to make a bad rib it really is don't get me wrong, there's people that can do it, but uh, we're not gonna be those people. We're gonna have lips smacking, lips smacking. I do a pretty, pretty generous black pepper. You wanna get all those surfaces coated. Salt, I use pink Himalayan. It's a, it's a bigger grit salt. Uh, no in particular purpose though, it's, I mean, it's salt, it's salty which is what you're looking for in salt. And what we're gonna do, I use mustard because when I was learning how to barbecue, that's how I learned. And sometimes I'll, you know, swap out for a little something different every once in a while. But when I, usually when I'm doing pork ribs, I'm just gonna put some good old yellow mustard on there. For those of you that are not experienced barbecuers, this has nothing to do with flavor. You're not gonna taste the mustard on your ribs. It is just a really thick liquid that acts as a binder for your rub. Like I said, you don't have to worry about your ribs tasting like a big jar of mustard. It's not gonna happen. But what you are gonna get is a good bond on your rub which is gonna create a nice, beautiful, flavorful bark on the outside surface of these ribs. And it's gonna be mighty fine. But as you barbecue and as you sort of work on your techniques and you find things you like, you're gonna, you know, come up with little combos and different things. And you might even develop your own rub. That's always a good idea to work on. Today, 
We're using a two part system that I've kind of just come to love. This is from Rib Rack. It is a spice rub and man, it is good. And then we're going to be using Malcolm Reed's Killer Hogs, the barbecue rub. If y'all haven't checked out Malcolm Reed on YouTube, he uh, can teach you just about anything you want to know about barbecuing. The guy is good. He's good. But we're going to do a nice heavy coat. This is going to provide color and it's going to provide flavor and it's going to create just a really nice bark. Do not be afraid to go heavy on this. Don't think, oh, it's going to be over seasoned. It's not. It's going to be packed with flavor and then it's going to be like, I wish I would have made more ribs because I don't want to share these with anybody. Not even anybody. And so what I'll do is I will let that set on there and then I'm going to put a shake of this spice rub on there and the spice rub really just adds something nice to it. it it really complements pork really well. If I can find a link for this stuff, I got this at a Winn-Dixie grocery store. And if I can find a link for it for you, I will. There will be a link to Malcolm's Rub. You can check that out. So we've just got plain yellow mustard. We've got salt and pepper before the mustard. And then we've got the Killer Hogs, the barbecue rub. This is a more, this is a sweeter type of a barbecue. Uh, it's not, it's got as much spicy to it. And then we've got some of this rib rack spiced rub on top of that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this sit for just a little while and let some of that salt and everything pull just a little bit of moisture out of those ribs so that it gets a little tackier and holds that rub on there. And then I'm going to flip it. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. All right, so I gave that about five minutes of sweat time and everything looked really good. You start to see just a little bit of shine come through that seasoning and that's how you know it's probably going to stick for the most part you can go ahead and flip that rack and get started on the other side so let's go ahead and get our pepper on there now you can trim a little bit of this fat but today i ain't worried about it a lot of people say fat is flavor so we're gonna, we're gonna have some flavor on these bad boys there's not as much fat on baby back so you don't have to worry about it quite as much as like a big rack of spare ribs where you're going to have you know, sections that have thick chunks of fat that are going to create a bad bite experience for you and the people that you cook for. But this, not so much. We've got a lot of meat exposed. And so, not such a big worry. So I got salt and pepper. Then we come back with the good old mustardo. got our mustard on there now we're gonna go heavy again with the barbecue rub when you're seasoning with rub you want to be elevated above the meat a little bit and you want to use nice even length spreading sw swipes I suppose you would call it and then what you do as you get to these areas that are didn't get as much shining through a little bit more and you hit them up individually to make sure everything's good and coated you want to make sure that you stand that rack up a little bit and get some on the tips of those ribs because that is a bite as well one thing i like about malcolm reed's seasonings is they always seem to come out of the bottle really well. I don't know if they put something in them to keep them shaking really well, but compared to some other ones, you get a nice even distribution of the rub. Now we're gonna go on with the rib rack spice rub. And if you're in a bigger hurry than I am, you can pat this. Just lightly pat it to try to press everything on. But I'm going to let mine sit here for a few minutes while I prepare a few more things. And it's just going to sweat through and it's going to bind all that on. So this rack of ribs is ready for the smoker. And uh, we're going to get them on there in just a minute. The way that we're going to be cooking our ribs today is going to be 
a no wrap, a little hotter, a little faster method of cooking these ribs. So it's not necessarily hot and fast, but it's a little hotter, a little faster. I've done this technique on baby backs several times and I really like it. I was more of a wrap guy where I was, you know, two hours on the smoke, two hours in the wrap, you know, one hour in the seasoning or two, three, one or three, two, one. A lot of different methods that you can use, but this method works really good for my baby backs and it's less to worry about. Just a spritz every now and then to keep the outside of that, more, that meat taking on smoke. And that's really all you have to worry about. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna talk more about that out there at the pit. All right, so we've made it out here to the pit. Uh, this is where the real show is. What we're gonna do is we're gonna open this baby up. We're gonna put these ribs in there. We're gonna let them sit in there for about an hour and I'm gonna come in and spritz with a little bit of apple cider vinegar. And that's gonna help the smoke attach to those ribs and help them bind a little bit. If y'all haven't already, hit that like button for me and consider becoming a subscriber to my channel. What I've done in preparation for these ribs is I turned my smoker on, got it going, and then I cranked the temp up to 350 degrees for about 30 or 40 minutes to sort of sanitize my grates and get everything nice and hot in there. And so now what we're gonna do is I, about 10 minutes ago, I came out here and I put it back on the lowest setting. That's the smoke setting on these Pit Boss vertical smokers. It looks like a five, but I've been told it's an S. So either the five or the S, whichever you prefer, but I'm gonna let this thing run on the smoke setting for one hour, one hour, one hour and a half, something like that. Depends on if I get distracted or not. I'm at home with my girls, so there's a high probability that I can get distracted. But the good news is, is that you're not gonna hurt anything. It's just gonna give it a little bit more smoke flavor. So let's get this thing open. It's gonna be real easy when you're picking up your ribs because you don't wanna displace too much of your seasoning. So find a good spot to grab it on both ends, get a good pinch grip, and just lift those ribs up. Now, you could lay them in there and just leave it like that, but what I like to do is take them from either end, you take them from either end and you just press in a little bit. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna bind that meat up a little bit, chunk it up, and make them cook a little bit thicker. Now we close her up, be back in about an hour to crank that heat back up to 250 degrees, spray it with a little apple cider vinegar, and man, from then on, this place is gonna be smelling mighty fine for the next about four hours after that, so. But we're gonna see how it goes. We're gonna be cooking to an internal temp today. A lot of people, they do the bend test on their ribs. I like an internal temp. I like to get that probe in between those bones, check that meat on the thicker end. And I'm trying to look for around 200, 205 on that internal temp. So we'll see y'all here in just a little bit for the spritz. All right, so we're back out here at the pit and our ribs have been on the smoke setting for an hour now. And now is the time when we're gonna open up, give them a little spray. I've got some apple cider vinegar here. We're just gonna coat them real good, get them shiny again, crank the temp up to 250 degrees, and then we're gonna let it ride until we come back out in about another hour and spray again. So let's have a look. So you can see that they haven't taken on a whole lot of color yet, but they are starting to tighten up just a little bit from just that smoke setting. So you can definitely tell that the surface of the meat has dried and that's gonna make it harder for that smoke to adhere. So now it's, we're just gonna hit it up. And you don't wanna put so much on there that it runs a lot because the seasoning will run off with it, but you do wanna get it a nice coat. What I like to do is I set mine up not on the bottom rack. That way I can get in here and I can get that bottom side. And that should do it. Smoke is rolling. We're going to crank the temp up. Hit that baby on up about two feet. All right, so the ribs have officially been on the pit for two hours. We're gonna pop them open, check up, take a look. As you can see, they have tightened up a good bit and have dried up. So we're gonna hit them again with the old apple cider. And you can use water, you can use apple juice. I said, this is just a 
help that smoke bind to the ribs. And once again, we're gonna close her down. One hour on the smoke, one hour at 250 so far. And keep on going. See y'all in a bit. I do not wanna pull my ribs if they don't have much bend to them. You wanna give them a little more time. Don't think that this is an exact science. You always have to be able to improvise according to what your barbecue is telling you. So make sure that you're paying attention to that sort of stuff and realizing that, you know, if you're doing the three, two, one method, that that might work most of the time, but you may have a rack of ribs that had a higher fat content, a lower fat content. Uh, the, the animal itself could have been dehydrated at the time of slaughter, who knows, but it can always have an effect. So make sure that you're willing to adjust and adapt just like we're doing right now, add a little bit more time to it. And we're gonna get the temp that we want and we're gonna get the tenderness that we want, I guarantee it. And a lot of times one end of the rib rack is gonna be a different temp than the other just because with most ribs, you're gonna have a thicker end and a thinner end and you know all that comes into play as far as how fast it takes to get to temp. Everybody, so we're out here at the pit. We are now at our, I got four and a half-ish, something like that. And we've hit a uh, landmark internal temp for me which is right there at that 195, 197-ish mark. We just hit that. And so what that tells me, it, the way that I do my baby bags, is that it's time to pull them, put some sauce on them. I'm gonna crank my pit up another 50 degrees, up to 300, and we're gonna set that sauce real good, get a good set on the sauce, and then we're gonna pull them, let them rest for about 15 minutes, and then we're gonna go eat. All right, everybody, we've reached the point in the show where we are going to pull the ribs. They've reached the temp I want them to hit at about that 195, 197 mark. I'm gonna pull them, throw them on the uh, cutting board. We're gonna sauce those babies, put just a little bit more of a flavor profile on them. Then we're gonna put them back in there for about 15 to 30 minutes. Sometimes you can go 45 minutes if the, if the temp isn't where you want it, but we really just wanna set that sauce, get it to get good and thick. That way it sticks to your fingers and your lips, baby, if you know what I'm saying. So let's check, let's check them out. Got a good bark on them. And this is a look that you don't get if you wrap. This is one of the things I like about this no wrap method is you get just a crazy good bark on those ribs. And so what we're gonna be doing with these ribs is I am going to reapply or apply my first layer of barbecue sauce. And then I'm gonna give it just a light dusting of the rub that I put on there at the beginning. And we're gonna let that set and it's gonna be mighty fine. Those ribs are ready. So this is gonna be a quick, a quick set. You can see all that color on the bottom side from the just nonstop exposure to the heat, nonstop exposure to the smoke. And some people may not like that. Some people may prefer the outside to be a little softer but I, as long as the inside is tender, that's all I'm looking for. Don't be stingy with it. Like Leonardo da Vinci. Is that better? Those babies are ready to go back for just a little bit. All right, so we got them back in the smoker. We're gonna give them about 15 minutes, maybe 20 to set that sauce. And we're going to eat. We're going to eat because let me tell you something. It's good. Is it good? <laughs> All right, everybody. We've reached that magical moment that every barbecue pit master in the world looks forward to. The moment where you cut into the meat that you've been working on all day. You crack open a cold beverage of your choice. And you see what the finished product is all about. And so... With this particular rack of ribs, we did the no wrap method. 
We cooked at 250 degrees for almost five hours, six hours, counting the one hour on the smoke setting. So it's a long cook, and the, the time is added because you wanna get that extra smoke on the meat. But I want you to look at what we've got here. Just a beautiful, beautiful rack of ribs. The color is amazing. The bark, I'm not gonna lie, I have picked at this a little bit. The bark is fantastic. Just optimal, fantastic. And so we're just gonna just do a little bit of this. Just a little bit of cut. Just a little bit of cutting. That's all we're gonna do. Oh, 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 oh. oh my gosh. That is just one of the best sights to see. After smelling barbecue all day long, you get to crack it open and you see the juice, you see the tenderness, and you know that it's not gonna be long before you take a big old bite. Oh, I'm gonna have a little bitty bite right here. <laughs> Man, I hope that y'all copy this method so you can know why my mouth is watering so much that I can barely talk. I'm fixing to serve these bad boys up with some rattlesnake beans fresh from the garden, some fresh sliced homegrown tomatoes, and some corn on the cob right out of the garden. Something that I wanted to uh, throw into this video, uh, I know somebody out there probably wondering what sort of sauce was that he was putting on his ribs. Well, I got this at Sam's Club. This is Sonny's Barbecue. I don't know if you've ever eaten any Sonny's Barbecue. I know they're in the Southeast, but this is a great sweet barbecue. It really complements Malcolm's Rub uh, with the sweetness and the barbecue flavor. Just works great. And I also wanted to uh, let y'all see the bite because it turned, it turned out really nice. Maybe slightly overcooked as to what I typically look for, but just, the taste is just phenomenal. Like you don't even notice anything. <laughs> just a really good bite. It's trying to fall off the bone, but there's just enough hold there to where it stays in place. All the fat is just rendered down to just a super juicy bite that just, it makes your eyes want to roll back in your head. It really does. Yeah, that's perfect. You get that sweet. You get that little bit of bitter that you get from spraying that apple cider vinegar during the cook. You can taste that spice rub that I put on there, just kind of right there towards the back when it rolls over the back of your tongue. The black pepper. It all sort of comes together. The most dominant flavor is that sweet barbecue flavor. If you like sweet barbecue, this recipe is gonna become one of your favorites, I promise. And you can use any sort of barbecue sauce. You know, Sonny's is just really good. And Malcolm's Reed's Killer Hogs, the barbecue rub is phenomenal. Highly recommend both of these. You're gonna have good results if you try this. I hope that uh, if you give this a shot, that you have the similar results, the similar success, and that they turn out as good as what I'm tasting right now. If you have any questions, any comments, any concerns, anything like that, let me know. Don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button for me. It helps me out so much with my channel. And please consider becoming a subscriber to my channel. I'm about to start putting out a lot more cooking content because I enjoy that the most. I like all my other review content because I like sharing with you guys, but this cooking stuff really just resonates with me and I know that you like it too. So uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I'm about tired of making videos. I'm about ready to sit down with a plate. We'll see y'all next time.